Creating our own meaning in his life means not waiting for things to happen. Instead, we make things happen for ourselves. Moving into Portugal rekindled my search for purpose and meaning. It is here, after all, that I've recalibrated a vision for myself, my own pursuit for creative freedom. And by doing so, I also discovered something else, the great beauty of this country. These lands that sing to their own tune of mystery and majesty. We've roamed and roamed around the glorious region of Baira, and our expedition continues further to the east as we delve deeper into this marvellous mountainous landscape, further exploring the vast plains and the fortress towns in this mighty frontier of Portugal. Our odyssey on these mountain roads led us to one of the great secrets of Serra de Estrela, an understatedly beautiful town that flourished at the foot of these mountains, one that stand at the cusp of the magnificent Valley of Zezere, a town whose magic lie in its utter peace and tranquility, as if nature weaves its own spell to anyone who comes here, elatedly transfixed by the restorative powers of this evergreen place. This is Mantegas. Exploring this place was rapturous, and just nearby is the spectacular glacier valley of Zezere, where time and nature both carve out a scenery for us to behold. A vital part of this trip is to explore the significance of this region in terms of cultural and national heritage, and right at the heart of Mantegas is something that's quintessentially Portuguese, the production of wool. This is Ecola, a textile factory that's been weaving wool since 1925, considered to be the oldest certified artisanal production unit in Portugal. Turns out wool has been sheared in his mountains since the Middle Ages, and as Ecola's director Antonio Costa tells us, the family of João Clara has kept this age-old tradition alive today. Ecola is a special, I would say a very special project, because we do all the cycle of the wool, we use our local breeds, Bordeira Serra da Estrela, and we do the iconic fabric called Burel, so a waterproof material. Deriving and creating something meaningful from the nature and life on these mountains is what Ecol has been doing for ages, working with the local shepherds in this region where the raw material of wool is sheared, selected, spun and woven into high quality products that are then distributed and then worn, not just in Portugal, but around the world. In the frame of the region of Serra da Estrela, Ecol is a great player that makes the difference because we spread the wool, our wool, worldwide, a lot of different countries that are looking for genuine, natural and sustainable Portuguese products. This is proof that despite the challenges of life in these mountains, something remarkable is woven into a beautiful heritage that this region can be truly proud of. Another part of Ecola's project is a hotel that offers a peaceful escape in these mountains. This is Hotel da Fabrica, turning what used to be the old ancestral Ecola factory and revitalizing the building with modern and functional minimalism. Understandably, the greatest asset here is that magnificent view of Mantegas and Serra de Estrela, that bucolic landscape of rolling mountains, a perpetual green, languorously laid out in front of you. I adored being here, a time spent in the stillness of the mountains for a few days, just before we set off to an expedition exploring more of Baira's aldeias históricas, or the historic villages of Portugal. 
One of the great things about this part of Baira is that it's strategically laid out with a ring of fortress towns that dominate the region. One of these towns is known for the tale about the Reina Santa Isabel, who defied a king and performed the legendary miracle of the roses in this town called Sabugal. This place is also known to have Portugal's first pentagonal fortress, a castle that still stands mighty and strong today. Next up, we went further along the foothills of Serra de Estrela to witness one of the ancient towns in this region called Celorico de Baira. A town with walls running around its vicinity, a town that's admittedly touched with some time-worn melancholy. And yet, I find it quietly contemplative walking around here. And as we walked further and climbed up, we set foot in a citadel that's more than 550 meters high into the air, with a riveting 360 view of the Baira landscape. The following day, just when we thought we haven't seen the best yet, we pursued further to a Portuguese town that teeters at the edge of the Spanish border. Almeida, one of the most unique fortified towns in Portugal, is a significant stronghold that played a great role in the Portuguese War of Restoration against the Spanish throne, and in the next century struggled against the Napoleonic invasion. Without a doubt, Almeida is an impressive structure, a town enclosed within its walls, but let me tell you, it's even more impressive when seen from up above, laid out in a marvellous 12-pointed star. This Baira trip isn't complete without tasting the various wines on offer in this region. In fact, this adventure was solely inspired by the sommelier Salvador Borges de Castro, whose passion for the wines of the Baira interior region shines through. We drove all the way up to a town called Figueira de Castelo Rodrigo to taste some of the unique wines there, and as Salvador explains, the Baira interior wine region was created in 1999 and was clearly demarcated for us to understand its characteristics and subtleties. Three sub-regions, north to south, Figueira Castelo Rodrigo, and then Pinhel and Cova da Baira. In this case, we are in cooperative of Figueira Castelo Rodrigo and we are tasting three wines. We begin with this white, with a single grape wine called Syria. This Syria normally have this, this uh, crispy acidity, very elegant, and also a, a bit of freshness and citrus also. The second one will be this Figueira Castelo Rodrigo, the single grape with Turiga Nacional, the, perhaps the most planted we have in Portugal. And this region also keep this freshness and this red fruit very involving in your mouth. And we finish with this, the, la, uh, the last one, Convento Aguiar Reserva Tinto, with uh, two grapes, so once again we're back to, um, to Turiga Nacional and also Tinta Ruiz have this fruitiness, this, um, this strawberries, uh, raspberries, very sharp as well. And you, you can notice also some cacao or chocolate at the very end. After this tasting, I asked Salvador what makes the wines in Baira so special. Uh, most of these vineyards are planted between Castelo Rodrigo in, in the high place and also from the Serra da Marofa. Normally the vineyards are, are planted between 650 meters and 750. For my taste, as my favorite wine region in Portugal, the wines from this, uh, from this area, Figueira de Castelo Rodrigo and Barinto uh, um, Epoans are super gastronomical, very elegant. This is my favorite. 
The wines from this region have undeniable distinctive quality and this is derived from a winemaking tradition that dates back to the 12th century in these lands. Now, this cooperative winery alone produces over 6.5 million litres of wine every year, collectively from its 800 partners. I asked Salvador why he had chosen this Adega Cooperativa for a wine tasting. This cooperative represents each sub-region in, in Portugal and it's important to support this um, public, you can see, or this group of people to stay together to do these wines. That's why it's important to talk about them. It's important to support these people. After this thoroughly satisfying wine tasting, we discover that, outside, as we continue to roam, we found ourselves mesmerized by this incredibly beautiful town of Figueira de Castelo Rodrigo. The most fascinating aspect of this town is perhaps what lies at the top of this medieval village. You'll find the ruins of a palace owned by Cristóvão de Mura, who was the former Marquis of Castelo Rodrigo, and his keep, at the time a symbol of Spanish oppression, was later burnt and destroyed during the Portuguese War of Restoration. This was never rebuilt and now became a symbol of Portuguese independence. On the last leg of our tour, we finished off in a city that's considered the capital of Baira Baixa, a once ancient town revived and bestowed as a gift to the Knights Templar during the founding of Portugal. The Knights Templar had a huge influence in this place, who built its main castle and the wall surrounding the town. Walk around this historic place and end up in Jardim do Passo Episcopal, considered to be one of Portugal's finest Baroque gardens. Sometime during this trip, we wanted to taste the local flavors and went to Cabra Preta, which delightfully focused on the traditional flavors of Beira cuisine. Not only were the dishes superb, but the dining experience was incredibly welcoming too. Finally, we visited Pessoa Wine Spot, located at the historic Praça de Camões, and tasted some of their expressive wines, cultivated and produced from three different regions, Duro, Minho and Beira Baixa. This is another testament that Baira has so much to offer. Now I look back on this trip and I often think about what's in Baira that captivated and resonated in me. I realize that the older I become, I tend to gravitate towards what is underseen, obscure and a little offbeat. And Baira's quiet magnificence is a testament that once you go further beyond the familiar, a great discovery awaits of towns riddled with stories and character, of sceneries that open your eyes to something new. This trip in Baira was an experience of true spontaneity, unembellished and true. And sometimes we have to go out there and roam and lose ourselves to find something unexpectedly magical. The beauty of being in the moment, appreciating every precious time we have, this adventure was a testament that it's never too late to make things happen. Like every single one and every single place we've been in this part of Portugal, we just have to recognize and make the most of what's around us and create something meaningful from it. Because I realize in this life, we can create our own purpose, our own semblance of happiness, our own little flicker of hope.